Level one, instinctual. Can you imagine a world that feels like navigating a storm with no map, no words, only sensation? That's life at the instinctual level. The mind here is a reflex machine powered by immediate needs. Every reaction, a cry, a flinch, a grasp, is the brain's first version of fight or flight. Underneath it all, tiny ancient circuits are at work. The brain stem controlling heartbeat and breathing, the amygdala sounding the alarm when something feels off, and the hypothalamus kicking the body into motion. These are the same regions that kept our ancestors alive long before language or logic ever existed. When a person at this level feels hunger, they cry. When startled, they recoil. When soothed, they rest. This level often appears in people with profound intellectual disabilities or early brain injury, situations where higher thinking regions, like the prefrontal cortex, don't fully develop. But here's something fascinating. Brain scans show these individuals still respond powerfully to rhythm, music, and human touch, as if the brain finds new routes to feel connection when reason isn't available. They rely on familiar voices, gentle tones, and steady presence to make sense of the moment. But even without language, emotion speaks fluently. A kind look can calm them, and a harsh sound can break their peace. In their world, emotion is the first language, and maybe the most honest one. Their days may seem quiet from the outside, but they're full of emotional depth, proof that understanding doesn't always need words. Because before there were thoughts, there were feelings. And when feelings begin to guide behavior, the emotional mind awakens. Level 2. Emotional. This is the feelings before facts zone, where people read moods better than memos. In school, algebra with letters can feel like a magic trick, and open-ended essays turn into doodling in the margins. But give them drama class, PE, or art class, and you'll see them light up. Show it. Don't just say it. That's their superpower. Out in the world, they thrive where empathy beats abstraction. Caregiving, hospitality, food service, landscaping, retail. Places where emotion matters more than algorithms. They might not debate politics, but they'll cheer you up faster than your therapist. They notice when you're upset before you even say a word, and they'll do what they can to make you smile. They don't learn from theory. They learn by doing, feeling their way to understanding. Scientists call this experiential learning. The part of the brain that powers this is the limbic system, which links emotion to memory. When something feels important, the brain releases dopamine, a chemical that tells your neurons to pay attention. Then the hippocampus, the brain's memory librarian, files it neatly away. That's why someone here might forget a Wi-Fi password five times, but never forget the song that played when they met their best friend. This kind of intelligence doesn't run on equations. It runs on connection, and that is deeply human. Yet sooner or later, feelings need a framework. That's where practical intelligence takes over. Level 3. Practical. Welcome to the land of everyday smart, where common sense reigns supreme and did you try turning it off and on again? is considered tech support. This is what most people actually score on an IQ test. You're doing fine, even if the word average hurts a little. People at this level are the glue of society. They run errands, fix leaky faucets, file taxes eventually, and somehow keep everyone else's chaos organized. In school, they did fine. Not valedictorian material, but they understood the assignment. Clear instructions? Easy. Group projects? They carried them. But the moment the teacher said, write a five-page essay on the meaning of life, the brain hit a blue screen of death. They're practical, reliable, and allergic to overthinking. You'll find them managing offices, balancing budgets, organizing events, and quietly holding families together, while the creative people forget birthdays. They're the friend who brings snacks and the checklist to the road trip, and triple checks that the house is locked after you leave. They may not quote Nietzsche, but they can fix the printer jam on the first try, which frankly feels just as rare. Their brain runs on coffee, checklists, and mild exasperation. Neuroscientists would say their brains rely more on procedural memory, the mental system that stores habits and routines. But honestly, repetition is their secret weapon. They don't chase ideas. They execute them. Sure, they may not invent teleportation or flying cars, but they'll figure out how to book the cheapest flight with two layovers and free snacks. Because at this level, intelligence means making things work. But what happens when the checklist maker starts asking if the list itself could be optimized? Level 4. Analytical. In the world of analytical minds, 
Organization is zen, and imperfection is a personal affront. These folks live in spreadsheets and dream in footnotes. They're the reason group projects don't implode. In school, they were the students who didn't just finish the assignment. They reformatted the margins, double-checked everyone's citations, and somehow found a typo in the textbook. While others winged it, they documented it. They weren't the loudest, but they were always the ones teachers secretly relied on to make the class look organized. As adults, they gravitate toward roles that reward precision. Analysts, engineers, coordinators, planners. Their minds run on logic loops, the kind that dream in color-coded spreadsheets. They see inefficiency the way a cat sees a laser pointer, impossible to ignore. Their minds run on executive functions, the mental project management system that plans, prioritizes, and stops you from sending a work email that just says, see attached, with no attachment. When this network fires well, life looks organized. When it glitches, you find them reorganizing the pantry at 2 a.m. for stress relief. They're powered by pattern recognition, the brain's ability to predict what comes next by comparing the present with every memory of the past. Think of it as mental autocomplete. See enough data, and your mind starts guessing the ending. That's why they're the first to notice trends, typos, and that one coworker who calls out sick every time they're scheduled for a big presentation. They'll spend 20 minutes fixing the formatting on a spreadsheet no one else will ever open for inner peace. These minds don't just fix what's broken. They redesign what should never break. And then there are minds that go a step further, not just analyzing the system, but seeing patterns inside the chaos itself. Level 5. Conceptual. Here live the pattern players, people who see connections between two things that shouldn't even be in the same sentence. They might read the news and predict what stock is about to go to the moon before anyone else notices it. Give them random ideas, and they'll link them faster than a conspiracy theorist with unlimited red string. In school, they were the students who finished group projects alone because it was faster that way. They corrected teachers, redesigned the rubric, and occasionally forgot lunch because they were too busy mapping how gravity, music, and friendship might follow the same mathematical curve. As adults, they're the strategists, designers, researchers, and idea people whose notebooks look like crime scenes of genius. They turn shower thoughts into PowerPoint decks. Half of what they say sounds insane, until it works. Their brains run like Formula One engines. High-speed pattern recognition meets abstract reasoning. They don't just notice what's there, they notice what could be. Neuroscientists call this associative thinking, when distant ideas fuse into new ones. It's the mental magic trick behind every invention, from the light bulb to AI. The trade-off? Their minds never really shut off. Sleep feels optional when your brain's brainstorming new physics at 3 a.m. And when your thoughts sprint ahead, emotions and relationships can lag behind. Conceptual thinkers don't just connect dots. They start inventing new constellations. And once a mind like this stops connecting ideas and starts creating them, you've officially entered the world of the visionaries. Level 6. Visionary. This is where intelligence stops being a skill and starts becoming a force of nature. These people don't just ask why, they ask why not, and then actually build the answer out of spare parts, caffeine, and chaos. They were the kids pitching inventions at recess, or asking if students and teachers wanted to get in early on their new startup idea. Their science fair project had moving parts. Their art assignment had a marketing plan. They didn't break rules to rebel. They broke them because the rules got boring halfway through. Inside their heads, divergent thinking goes into overdrive. That's the brain's way of generating ideas that don't yet exist. Neuroscientists point to the frontoparietal network, where creativity and logic shake hands. It's the rare wiring that lets someone invent a new algorithm and write poetry about it on the same afternoon. As adults, these are the founders, inventors, and tinkerers who turn imagination into infrastructure. They once automated their cat feeder and accidentally started a robotics company. The surgeon who redesigned a tool mid-operation because it could be better. The artist who can't explain their process because they're still inventing it. They're the ones who invent a robot that sits on your shoulders and feeds you tomatoes. This actually happened. Or the ones who turn a good idea into a great one and make it profitable. Visionaries live in permanent beta. They never see the world as finished, just as version 1.0 and needing an update. But what happens when vision stops being about building the world and starts becoming about understanding it? Level 7. Transcendent. The transcendent mind doesn't just solve problems. It questions the need for problems in the first place.
These are the people who stare at the sky for three hours and come back with a new theory of consciousness and a sunburn. Einstein once said, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. For someone who rewrote physics, that's humility so deep it loops back to genius. At this level, the mind stops chasing thoughts and starts orbiting ideas. Inside the brain, something fascinating happens. A network called the default mode network, the system that links imagination with self-awareness, begins syncing with regions tied to empathy and reflection. Translation, the self starts blending into everything else. Some traditions call that enlightenment. Neuroscientists call it integrative consciousness. Same thing, but with a science name. People at this level appear in history as sages and visionaries. Laozi, the Buddha, Jesus, Ramana Maharshi, those who saw the same world we do, but through an entirely different lens. Da Vinci lived here too. He painted the Last Supper while sketching helicopters centuries before helicopters existed, not chasing one discipline, but dissolving the boundaries between them. His notebooks read less like notes and more like conversations with the universe. They're the only people who can make silence sound intelligent. They've solved the equation of life, but they still can't remember where they parked. These are the minds that discover relativity, compose symphonies in their heads, or sit perfectly still and make the rest of us rethink existence. And maybe that's the punchline of intelligence itself. After a lifetime of thinking, the wisest minds finally realize the smartest thing you can do is simply be. If you liked this video and you want to level up your IQ, check out this other video to get smarter today.